Okay. So can you hear me? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think it, we all enjoyed Professor Kong's uh, introductions to the very fancy modern systems to uh, this speech. But uh, we think uh, all these models are just for Zhonghua. I'm kind of uh, expecting such systems can be used in languages, uh, all kinds of languages in, in Yunnan. So maybe we can find some, some more general models for the world language. So in my talk, I would like to introduce language diversity and the human diversity unite to you. Uh, basically, uh, we know the theory of out of Africa. So uh, uh, people come from from Africa to uh, to the other parts of the world. Uh, from this kind of roads, we are kind of uh, suppose the Yunnan is a very important uh, um, provision. As you know, Yunnan is uh, at the east, east the edge of uh, Himalaya, and uh, uh, along this edge, another name is ethnic called uh, cradle. So that means uh, lots of ethnic groups go up and go down. So there's uh, many kind of interactions and uh, many traces of languages and uh, different uh, ethnic groups there. So uh, in the book uh, about the people diversity by uh, Jingyi and uh, another scholar, Shu Jiayou, they kind of describe all kinds of genetic diversity of the uh, 56 and the group in China. So maybe you you if you are interested in how diversified uh, of people in China, you can refer this book. Uh, for Yunnan, there's very thing you can find that there are 15 Mingzu or ethnic groups only distributed in Yunnan. They include uh, my favorite uh, group, Bai, because uh, you know, I spent 10 years to study the Bai language and the Bai people. And some other other groups like Brown and Deang and Li Su, etc. From this uh, minorities, you can see uh, almost all kinds of uh, uh, language families can find examples in Yunnan. The um, Brown is from Australia, East Asia uh, group. And the Li Su Boom is from Tibet Burman. And the Dai is from Gangtai. So in the province of Yunnan, you can find lots of diversified ethnic uh, uh, groups there. So it's kind of rare in the some thirties uh, islands in China. Here is a map to show how these uh, even more ethnic groups distributed in Yunnan. All these colors represent different uh, ethnic groups in Yunnan, and the red one is is the Bai people. So from this map, you can see how diversified of the peoples and the ethnic group in, in Yunnan. Uh, in an article by Professor William Wang, he talk about the Yunnan the cultural trails. So if you like to see more, so you can refer this book. Uh, you can find the, uh, the Yunnan cultural trails include lots of language families, just I mentioned. And also you can find lots of ancient traces in different languages. Uh, because uh, Yunnan is kind of uh, mountain areas, so lots of groups are very conservative. So they, they kind of uh, get le less influenced by the Han culture. So, so lots of uh, ancient features can, can find the, uh, in these groups. Uh, and in the nature 
four more slides, I will introduce the early writing systems you can find in Yunnan to show how the right have diversified of the uh, languages. So, uh, Yunnan is called the kingdom of animal, kingdom of uh, plants, and plants said that or highlight to me. So we should also remember that Yunnan is the kingdom of languages and people. So that's why we Yunnan is so important if we care about the diversity of the world. So the Written Tibetan is well known to some. So you can find it in the northeast, in the Beijing atmosphere uh, uh, country, you can find the Tibetan people there, and they use the written Tibetan system. Here is the, uh, is the structure of a written uh, character of Tibetan. There's, uh, at most, there can be seven, seven Phonemes. So this is how they use their practical markers to, to show how how uh, how the vowel plants. There are actually five vowels there. For the R, it's unmarked, but for the others, E, U, A, O, something like that. So this characters and this is the marker, directly marker. So all these symbols, the first nine is the written Tibetan. The second line is the I IPA. You can find the correspondence. Yeah. So, anyway, from this kind of system, you can find uh, the distinctive fe uh, 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 features of the written Tibetan. It's different with the alphabetic system. And also, the organization of the written system is different. So, uh, we know. Now, lots of studies have been done for the for the cognition of Chinese characters and some other alphabetic systems. But for for some character system like written Tibetan, haven't been done yet. So, if they already build a kind of cognitive system of the character uh, or written systems, etc., so maybe it's not so general. If the system like the written pattern are not included. And this is the East Grid. Uh, in the left is the ancient <coughs> East Grid. And this is the regular or the modern modern E uh, scripts. And this is the translation how they how they mean. So look the, the ancient uh, uh, East groups, you may find okay, this one is quite different with the modern one. Uh, how to decode the ancient uh, E scripts haven't yet been done. So actually, it's a kind of mystery to us whether they are kind of picture character or is something like Chinese or something like other system. We don't know yet. But for the modern E system, is definitely a kind of uh, pinyin system or alphabetic system. Each symbol represents a phoneme or, or a variation of a phoneme. So from the Asian uh, e groups may be of more interesting to to see because this is kind of created by the Asian e people and a lot influenced by the other regional systems. How the E people create this system and how the mechanism operates. We want to know if we're really interested in the uh, cognitive system. And another system only can be found in Yunnan is the Dongba script or Nashi script. So you can see this is the demo and this is another demo. The first one means cloud and this one is no. So basically, you can see they are very, very pictographic, right? So it, many people think this kind of system is a primitive system. And this plays a very important role in the development uh, from the pictures to 
to written systems. So, uh, how the Nazi people use this kind of thing? Are their thoughts primitive, or 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 is comparable to to the modern modern uh, society, etc.? So, I think if uh, we do some research on that, it uh, will shed light on our collision system. And this uh, uh, another region system in Vietnam is the bias grid. And you can see this is the bias, bias grid characters, and this is the IPA transcription, and this is the meaning. So you can see they are very much like Chinese characters, and they just use some parts of Chinese characters to represent the bi language. This one is good, right? So you can see the first exactly the same thing of good in Chinese, but they use an uh, assembly like called mouth to mark this one is not Chinese. You should read it in by. Yeah, so this is the kind of strategy they use to they use Chinese character to represent the bi language. But they also have some other uh, method to use the Chinese character. This one is no. So uh, for this one is the Chinese sound. And they use the Chinese sound to represent a totally different meaning of of by no. This is actually is a kind of marker. This is so because this one is not purely like the Chinese, so it's not a like, a character of by, but they use it as a sound sound symbol. So another kind of strategy is something like this. Han actually is from the Xu in Bai. But they, this one has no phonetic collection between the Chinese character and the uh, Bai languages. The only collection is the semantic things. So that means they want to use the meaning side of the Chinese character and to represent the by. So basically you find that at least there's, there's three methods to use Chinese character to represent uh, the by languages. So it's kind of complicated. If you want to, or if you wish to master the by scripts, you must uh, know how to use Chinese characters. So that's a very interesting social uh, condition for the for the usage of the by by script system. So it's totally different with the written Tibetan and the Asian Xi and the Dongba. So how the how they how these people who use the by scripts to think about the or how they read this, I think is kind of full of interesting uh, theory there. So maybe. Sometimes we go to Yunnan to with the uh, brain waves with some fancy modern uh, techniques to do some study on that. But definitely, you can see there's uh, several different written systems used in the by uh, in the in the Yunnan area. So that would be uh, uh, provide a platform for, for for us to to do more general studies on the uh, written systems. So for me, uh, another uh, important question is, how does this language come into being? How this language related each other or to the other languages uh, in China or in the world? So we, we heterologically this is, try to use uh, many different methods to uncover the history of the languages and also Based on the cues from the uh, languages, we can uh, deduce or we can suppose some history about the people. So, in the later slides, I will introduce how the different interdisciplinary methods cooperate each other to uncover the whole history of the language and the people in Yunnan. So, for the first uh, uh, side is the heterolinguistics. So the basic question for the uh, Hasbro linguistics to ask is uh, how this language formed into families. 
So a very important uh, uh, hypothesis is cyanotypation hypothesis. So this one is proposed by Professor Li Fanghui in 1937. Uh, uh, he proposed that uh, there is a cyanotypation family in China. That means that all the languages in this family are come from the same origin. So they include uh, three branches. The first one is the languages or Chinese dialects. The second one is Tibetan Burman, and the third one is Gang Tai, and the first one is Miao Yao. So for the uh, uh, language groups, I just show you in the Rina group, you can find the uh, different representatives of the, all the of the branches. But uh, later on, there is another version of cyanotypation by Paul Bandic and Metzloff. They thank the Kantai and the uh, Miao Yao do not belong to the same Tibetan families, so they take them out and only uh, leave Tibetan Burman and the Chinese here. So here you can find the Bai and the Tibetan Burman a branch. But of course, uh, why we should take the Kantai and the Miao Yao out of the same Tibetan family is a debate. Uh, here comes another hypothesis about the Southern Tibetan family called Stanford. Uh This one is kind of, it, this theory is associated with George Van Dream, a, a uh, European scholar. He thought there is no reason to put the Chinese aside and contra in contrast with Tibetan Burma because there is no evidence to show all the Tibetan Burma languages shared, but doesn't shared by Chinese. So this is a very strong argument. Currently, or up to now, I didn't see any any counter evidence to against Sinobotic theory. But anyway, you can see here is Sinobotic, and the Chinese is kind of far way down in the family tree. So this is another hypothesis. So whether the Sinotibetan Sino theory or the another version of the Tibetan theory or the Sinobotic theory is, is right or, or, or it's, uh, uh, say it's, uh, it's right for the Rina language. We need more studies. Uh, currently, we see lots of uh, language groups in the Tibetan Burma area. Of course, the same thing uh, in, in Rina. So, to understand a history of languages, we must pay attention to two kinds of transmissions. The first one is so-called vertical transmission, and the second one is horizontal transmission. You can see the uh, vertical transmission is kind of elements in, uh, heritage from the proto language. But the vertical transmission covers the elements come from contact. So I think why there are so many hypotheses for the for the uh, language in Vietnam and in China that a, a ma major problem is they cannot distinguish which uh, uh, which uh, uh, met, which means of the transmission. That means. If you mix up of the two kinds of transmission, you will mix up the the lineage of the uh, genetic uh, transmission. So, with this uh, question in mind, I came to Hong Kong for my PhD studies in 2001, study under the supervision of Professor Wing Wang. So I looked into the uh, very interesting language that I just mentioned. So. For the bi languages, because uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, hypothesis for the history of the bi. Someone thinks the bi language is actually a Chinese uh, dialect, just get lots of uh, vertical transmission from the surrounding minority languages. Some guys think actually the bi is the, um, the ancestral group 
but it can also influence from Chinese. So, if you want to uncover the history of the bio language or the language like language like bio, you should do some uh, serious study in linguistics. So I went to the field of Yunnan to collect data with the red color. So that means the bio groups. I do some field works. And finally, we I pick up nine representative uh, dialects of of the bi language, and do some comparison. I reconstructed the protobike in my three year studies of the PhD, and then I spent three more years to reconstruct the proto E in my postdoc studies, and uh, finally. I do some comparison of the three, three proto-languages of Chinese, but proto by and proto yi try to find their relationship or how how they interact each other. So, um, after these years, I give the very simple trick here. This is the, the result of uh, about 10 years. So sounds very <laughs> humble, right? Here is Chinese, this is the fruit by and fruit e. So this tree means the Chinese and the fruit by are genetically related, and they are separated uh, later. Then the fruit e is split, split from the uh, ancestor. So uh, if you are interested, you can refer my my uh, book in 2006. So actually, we have a uh, different kind of evidence to support this tree. The first is kind of uh, uh, some change evidence. That means uh, from the uh, example, you can see the Bai and the Chinese shared more uh, some changes, uh, then the either of them shared with uh, uh, uh For instance, for the for the word "pi," uh, the protoforms of the of their ancestor may be something like this, rock, something like this. You can see "prudui" is is this form, but for the uh, proto by and Chinese, you can see the both of them share this kind of change. Rock should act something like this. And for the second one is the initial change. Or again, the proto by and Chinese share the same change. The third one is for the, we can see for the ending. Also the proto by and Chinese share the same thing, but the proto E is alone. For the semantic change, we also find something shared by Proto by and the Chinese, but not shared by uh, Proto E. We can see this is a general uh, sound change. Five watt uh, tree. Like the, uh, let's say, in Chinese, there is an old saying, Bao Xin Jiu Huo. You can know that, right? Xin means, actually means five watt. But uh, earlier, they means tree. So this kind of change is shared by Proto Bai and the Chinese. And then now the uh, the Proto Bai use another form to mean tree is raw. This is related to Chinese shu tree. But we know that this tree actually the earlier meaning is two plants. So this is another change uh, occurred both in Proto Bai and the Proto, uh, Proto Chinese. So this is another kind of evidence to support the tree I just gave to you. But uh, anyway, for the uh, Hetzel linguistics, we use comparative method. We can find the structure of the genetic relationship between languages. But all these kind of relationships are relative, in relative sense. We can not get the exact date of when this split occurs. So that's the dating problem of the historical linguistics.
So we don't know the time left of blue by. We can we use different uh, uh, dialects to reconstruct the blue uh, by. So people would want when this blue by exists. So this uh, problem we can not answer in historical linguistics, but we can use some materials from other disciplines. And also, when did this language split from each other? So we get the tree, get the structure, but uh, how to date the, the different uh, uh, bifurcation, we don't know yet. So that's, we need the help from other disciplinary. So the first one we can think directly is the historical documentation. If we get lucky, we get some record in the historical literature. Luckily or fortunately for the bi-languages, there is some documentation for that. This one is from uh, a Tang Dynasty literature, Manchu. There is some recording for the bi-languages. That means Yan Yu Yin, Bai Man Zai Zheng. That means the, the barbarian of the Bai is the, is the how say, is maybe is the standard for all the other ethnic group. So for, for us, the particularly interesting thing is they use Chinese character to record the, the sound of the primitive Bai, the barbarian, they call it barbarian Bai. So you, is, you see here, Da Chong Wei Zhi Follow Me. Da Chong is tiger. So that means tiger should be pronounced like follow me, something like that. You can use it. Because there's a lot of uh, Chinese uh, phonology or uh, recording in the history. So you can, you can use the IPA to transcribe the Chinese characters and then deduce all these uh, by words from the in the Tang Dynasty. So here, we did some uh, research on these uh, uh, characters. So here is five examples to 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 figure out the the uh, correspondence. Here is the proto by. You can see this is a tiger, and this is written in Chinese character in the Manchu. You can see this is law, and the proto by I reconstructed based on the fidelity is law. They're pretty much similar. Uh, so all these examples based here, what we can see from the documentation, uh, if you pay attention to the initials, you will say, okay, in the pro to by I reconstructed, there is distinction between the voiced and unvoiced initials. You can see here, this is the but this is the ga. So this is the contracts uh, of voicing. But in the recording of the uh, Manchu, you see the, these two words actually do not distinguish each other. So that means this, this kind of distinction or the uh, system, proof system reconstruct is early than this recording. So uh, that means in the biodialects, there's uh, some more conceptual distinction preserved, but not in the ancient documentation. So based on such thing, we can deduce that the proto by at least is early than the Tang Dynasty. So this is the kind of how we use the documentation to deduce the time of a proto language. So only we get lucky, we can get some such things, but lots of uh, languages out of record. So, if so, how we do that? If we do not depend depend on the the documentation, what is, uh, something else we can use for the uh, dating of language split? Uh, actually, we we can use a Method called the word group. This one is initiated by Professor Chen Baoya. Yeah. Actually, here I just use this kind of method to, uh, to, uh, help Catholic linguists to date the language split. So the basic idea is that we can see from the 
archaeological study, some materials appear earlier than the others, and the rough time span uh, we can record in the history. So that means for the material so of tools like stone, bronze, and iron, they appeared in order, and also their rough time can be deduced based on the archaeological findings. So that means the stone is earlier than room and earlier than the iron. So you can find some other <coughs> other groups they, with the uh, different uh, time depths. How can we use them? So if you look at the true materials of the represented in the byte, now you can see, okay, this is stone, and this is tomb, and this is bronze, and this is ivory. All these three materials can be reconstructed. That means all these materials appeared at least in proto by time lapse. They didn't uh, appear later. And if we compare the these three items between the Proto Bai and Proto Chinese, you can find okay this for the spoon they are related and at the, at the earliest time that but for the for the frozen item you can see this is the form of Proto Bai but you cannot find the correspondence in Chinese. So there's a blank. But for the iron, for the iron materials, again you find the correspondence. So for this correspondence is very interesting. So based on the uh, chronological order from the archaeology evidence, we can suppose at the time used in Stone, the Baich and the Chinese are still together. But uh, when coming to the broom, they actually split. So that's why they didn't share the same, same cognates of the broom. So that means they developed the broom materials independently. So that means if we know the time depth of the broom, then we can find the uh, time limit of the uh, split of Bai and uh, Chinese. But a problem is the iron. Again, you find that the things share the same roots. But this is actually a illusion. From the from the order, you can explain the iron as borrowing words because it's borrowed later. So after after this time, after the time of frozen, the by languages and the Chinese get into contact, and the, the Bai people may borrow the words of iron from Chinese. So, even only there are three words, you can you can deduce the uh, split uh, uh, time. So, if we get more get more groups like that, you can get uh, uh, a more accurate uh, dating for the language place. So for this three one, you can hypothesize that you can only get the upper limit of the language split. By the Chinese may be, you know, split, uh, how to say, at least before two, two thousand and 600 years ago, they split. Otherwise, they should share the same words of Bruden. So, and also the same thing happened in uh, the split between Bruden and Bruden Bai. So you can use lots of uh, word groups to do the uh, dating problem. So then, in after the uh, reconstructing of the three languages and uh, built the tree, I add some time depth 
on the tree. So you can find this in the uh, current idea for the time depth of uh, their splits. This is, this is the rough time span, but uh, it's much better than nothing, right? <laughs> so, uh, based on uh, the dating uh, studies, at least we can see historical linguistics you know, need the help from the uh, archaeology information. That means for the historical linguistics, we can only uh, define the sequence of language split, but we not easily can get the, uh, the absolute time. For the archaeology evidence, with this method of word group, we can have some information of the uh, archaeology uh, time. So in the future study, if we get more cooperation from the archaeologists, maybe we can get a better idea of the language split and the deeper split for the for for the by languages. So here comes another uh, side of uh, uh, my chart. So before this, we talk about languages, written systems, and also the uh, historical documentations. But uh, all these languages are used by people. So how these people's uh, diversification collected to the uh, diversification of the written systems or the languages. Uh, actually, I, I looked some looked into some data about the by people. So here is some picture uh, to show you the uh, different uh, by peoples uh, in different areas of Yunnan. This is uh, Lanping, north uh, uh, north uh, west of Yunnan. This is a branch of by people called the Lama. So this is from the Dali area, and this one is from Chiube. It's uh, quite close to Kunming. And this one is from Weixi or the west. And this one is from Anli. This one is, uh, uh, is uh, on the suburb of Kunming. So you, of course, look at their, their lookings. So you can you cannot do anything they pretty much like the Chinese, right? But actually, uh, genetics did a lot because they can use the genetic materials to find the similarities between the, all these groups. So we believe them, and we look into the data. And the very interesting, you find some you know, different stories talked about by the genetic geneticians, right? In 19, uh, in 1986, uh, 89, so this is by Professor Zhao, Hong Mao, and uh, his colleague. They use the GM and came and type in uh, 74 Chinese populations. If you look at that, the we try to search uh, by people is uh, 51. So I'm putting it here, and around the around the by people are all Chinese, are all Chinese. So this is Nanchang Chinese, Jinghua Chinese and uh, uh, Wanshan Chinese, Tanghua Chinese. So they, they qualify in the middle. So your hypothesis that the Bai people is very close to Chinese based on the evidence of genetician. But uh, one year later, you find another story. Here is the Bai people. But you see, the Bai people is out of all this here, Han, Han Chinese is here, right? So it's very in, inner uh, group, but the Bai Chinese is very outside of the of the tree. So it's kind of a split quite earlier. But this, if you uh, look at the materials, you'll find that this is based on 14 ethnic groups, and they, this is the, the red cells of blood, and some years later, uh, 80 years later, you, they use different uh, uh, genetic materials. You will find, again, another story for the Bai people. Bai here is very close to Hani, a Yi group, right? 
And then, based on some, some facial features, they also do some uh, analysis between the uh, uh, Vietnam people. So this is based on the facial features. You can see Nama is one branch of the Bai people. They are very close to Li Su. Yeah, it's a kind of uh, more Burmese people. And another one is Bai Zhu, they call the Bai Zhu. This is actually in Dali. It's another branch. But they are very close to Tokai. You know, it's a Kam Thai, Kam Thai people. So uh, for for linguists, the resemblance between the Bai people and the Nama people can be sure. They definitely from the same group. But for the for the Facial features, they are quite different, far away from each other. And in two, 2003, another work done based on the fundamental belief. So that means something like the fingerprints, they try to do that. It's pretty much like the facial uh, features. Again, another story for the Bai people. You can see, okay, this, this time the Bai people is associated with Na Xi, this, this people who use the Dongba characters. And the Le Mo people, again, is far away from the Bai people, right? So, based on the genetic uh, studies, Actually, we don't know how to interpret their stories uh, because uh, this kind of relationship is far away from the sample tree I just drawn, right? So, uh, what I I think, it, of course, the science the things all this language are spoke by the people, right? So the relationship between the groups should should explain the story of the languages. But how to do them, still we have a long way to go. But I, wish, I would like to make several remarks on that studies. The first time, the first is the time skills. You must have noticed that for five genetic traits I just show you, they use different genetic materials. All this belongs to different time scales. That means their genetics are true story, of course, but at different time scales. How to, but how to make these time scales with the historical tree or, or the tree of the, of the languages, we don't know yet. Another thing is the people's sample. For the first two, of genetic studies, you will find that they only use bilationalities. They didn't tell you how they sound, how, how they sampling, right? So if you look into details, so the first two trees are all from Dan, the, the central area of the Bai people. But the later two, uh, two trees, they use the branches like Le Mo, Nama, of different area of the five people. So, if you use different sampling, of course you will get different stories. So that means if we try to use the genetic materials, we should look at that, whether they can be collected to the uh, control linguistic study. Okay, so anyway, even though there are, there are many problems, but if we want to see a full picture of languages or papers, we should promote the joint research. Okay, that's all. Thank you.
Kind of so called a uh, uh, linear transformation, right? Character by character with a, uh, oh, sorry. So this is the IPA transfer frame of the chat, uh, by script, and this is just a meaning. Yeah. So you think it's not word by word translation? Yeah, this, this is not, this is free, free translation, yeah. Free translation. Yeah. But they try to use the same, same, same lines, but actually it's not exact. Uh, for for instance, this one, shui, right? This actually is not shui. This is because you know this one they also translate it into shui, but they use different characters. Yeah, you see that. So I know that because I, I know a little bit about bai, so su definitely is not shui, but it is something related to shui. Yeah, but tan is also something which, that means they have different categories of shui. But for Tan, they, own, they use Shui to, to mean that actually it's water. But for this one, it uh, has different meanings. So for this one, these two Shui are different. Yeah. So. And also, you, you seem to mention that the more in the. Um, this one, the, right? The last, no, yeah, yeah, the yeah. last syllable yeah. of the first line, yeah. the more. Oh, this it one, is, yeah. yeah you, you just mentioned that it's a grammatical marker. So yeah. They power Chinese characters for as a grammatical uh, marker, but sometimes they use that as a. So it's not like in um, Japanese. Usually, when they use the kanji, yeah. it's more for the semantic, right? So it's either verbs or nouns. But they also power Chinese characters as grammatical markers. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. But actually, I didn't do very uh, systematic study on that. But I sure do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Tommy Tom's uh, in the Maya language and also uh I think was, that if it's a the folk song for the uh, poem, you translate it with two lines. Yeah, this is how to read it. This is the this is the folk folk song. Yeah. The folk song, right? Yeah. So how do you uh in rhyme it? Is it the same as the seven characters of four line Chinese poem? You uh, read the structure I mean. Yeah, very, very, very good question. Uh, for the first one, how many tunes? Actually, this is the uh, this is the the, the should I, we should ask the expert of tune, Professor Kong, right? So actually, depend depends on how you define tunes, because uh, uh, for the five tune systems, uh, bo both the uh, F zero and the formation types mixed together. So for the traditional transcription, they said there are eight tones. But for the eight tones, for some tones, like, you know, uh, sometimes they have the same F0, but they have different uh, formation types. So anyway, they, therefore, if you combine F0 and the uh, um, formation types, there's eight different uh, of tones. And, uh, uh, for this kind of folk songs, yeah, they have some rules. We call the San Chi or three, seven, uh, kind of slope, something like, like that. And how they rhyme. Actually, I didn't do this, that is. But uh, I will do it. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, I'm Jackie. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I, I think you're going to be interested in your interpretation for the relationship uh, by Go Chinese. Yeah. So you know that in old Chinese there is a rich topology, for example, yeah. the S, S utilization for the uh -huh. causation. Yeah. So I wonder if there is any shared topology between Tokotai and the Chinese. Yeah. Thank you. This is a uh, good question, but uh, actually uh, someone, some scholars like uh, Randy Napola, they may not agree with you because they think okay the, for the for the synergy pattern maybe uh, we can see of course for the Tibet Burma area are lots of morphologies but for the Chinese they do not have 
So that means maybe some morphologists kind of developed later. And also another scholar, Lodan, in, the, uh, in France, right? They propose that, that maybe due to language contact in the Zhou Qing period, you, you know, some, some uh, minorities with morphology influence Chinese. You, see, like you can see the evidence from his article, yeah. So for me, we, I, I actually for the comparison, we, I didn't find any any morphology evidence to show the resemblance between the Chinese and the Bai. If you say okay, the two modifications uh, are the are the morphological uh, methods, you can see the E E is something you one E it means close, another means Chuan Yi. They use the tone modification to uh, change the noun word to noun uh, uh, noun to word. And uh, this also happened in Bai and Chinese, so we can only find this three pairs or four pairs of them. Yeah. But we if you use count them as the morphology or method we will see we do have. But for others I didn't see anything. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let me see whether it's Chinese. Maybe there's no Chinese. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Because Chinese. No. No. There's no Chinese. There's no Chinese. Uh. So there's. Oh, no, this is for me out. Yes. Bye. Bye is, uh, uh, yeah. Bye. Yeah, it's very close to, uh, not, not Yeah, this is by, very close to my And then honey, right? Yeah. No, no Chinese. No Chinese. You didn't use the Chinese uh, evidence. Oh, oh, yo, there is Chinese. Here. Here. So try Chinese. Maybe it's not very Chinese. Uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of complicated. They said this uh, evidence is very strong. Show two groups. One group is close to uh, to Yi. Another group close to Tibetan. But uh, for the detail, I don't know how to. Uh, actually, I don't know how to interpret their data from the the linguistic perspective. Yeah. Because this uh, tree cannot fit any language trees. Yeah. Or maybe we should use some some other tools like uh, Kavalis was a dam for the for the uh, for the genetic trees between uh, the the people trees around the world. Mm -hmm. I have, haven't done yet. Yeah. Actually, it's not. Bai is not uh, close to Lashi. Only a part of them close to Lashi. Only the Jiuhe people, right? Actually, they are very limited because uh, only the uh, I'll say the folk songers use the Bai to 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 write their uh, their songs. It's not uh, used by any other peoples. If they do not do not sing some songs, make folk songs, they will not use the Chinese character or not use the Bai scripts. They only they speak Chinese. For the Yi people, the for the Yi, all Asian Yi only use the by some some 
uh, all the, uh, I would say, they, they say, uh, be more, yeah, it's kind of, uh, uh, for the religion's use, yeah. They have lots of uh, records use the ancient, but some of them, most of them cannot be decoded. Only some, some, some modern, modern versions can be, can be read. So, yeah. Thanks, Steve, again.